Hello and uh, welcome back. In this session, we will talk about your uh, security groups. Uh, so we'll look at an introduction. We'll understand what your uh, security groups are and uh, why the security groups are uh, important. So in a nutshell, your security groups are simply your firewalls. All right. So whenever we launch our EC2 instances, we make use of your security groups to control uh, what traffic can coming uh, come in uh, to the server and what traffic can go out of your server. So you can uh, uh, simply think of it as a main door, uh, which you can use to control as to who can get into your house and who can get out of your house you can control that uh, uh, by making use of your security group so it this acts as a virtual firewall and here you will be defining all the port numbers what port numbers you want to allow uh, from where you want to allow all those details we define in a security group so with this you'll have two types of traffic you'll have the uh, incoming traffic as well as the uh, outgoing traffic so inbound rules is uh, what we use to control the incoming traffic so the traffic that can reach to your ec2 instances like from the internet what traffic you want to allow to your ec2 instance you can control that by making use of your inbound rules and then we have the outbound rules which can be used to control the traffic uh, going out of your ec2 instance which is your outgoing traffic so from your ec2 instance uh, what all you can access what um, maybe some applications on certain port numbers what you can access that can be controlled by making use of your outbound rules so whenever you launch an ec2 instance uh, you will need to specify one or more security groups so security groups are mandatory without a security group you cannot launch an ec2 instance and if you don't specify a security group when launching an ec2 instance uh, a default security group is uh, used so security groups are mandatory now so like i said if you do not specify a security group ec2 will use the default security group for the particular vpc that you are using now with these security groups we make use of your rules so any traffic you want to add the inbound traffic or the outbound traffic we make use of your rules to define what traffic you want to uh, allow uh, from your ec2 instances so maybe you want to allow uh, port 22 which is your ssh traffic or you want to allow port 8080 maybe you're running a java application and you want to allow uh, access for your java application or you want to allow HTTPS traffic. So what traffic you want to allow? We make use of your rules for that. So here uh, 22 will be one rule, 8080 will be one rule, 443 will be one rule and then so on. So you can modify these rules uh, for your security group at any time you want. Um, you can uh, add the rules during the launch of your EC2 instance. You can also uh, modify the rules after you have launched your EC2 instance. So you can do it on the fly. So whenever your EC2 decides whether uh, to allow the traffic to an EC2 instance, it will evaluate all these rules that you have defined in your security groups that is associated with the instance. So based on the rules that you have defined in your security group, that is a traffic that will be allowed to or from your EC2 instances. Now, when you launch an instance in a VPC, you must specify a security group that is created for that VPC. So uh, security groups are VPC specific. So when you're launching your EC2 instances, so here, let's say I'll, I'll launch a new instance and uh, we'll select our AMI, my uh, instance type. Let's say we'll go with uh, t2.micro, which is the default one. I'll select my uh, key pair. And then here you select your VPC. As of now, we are going with the default VPC. We will leave it to uh, that. So the security groups are specific to your VPC. All right. So depending on the VPC that you are uh, selecting, the security groups are also uh, selected accordingly. So your security groups are VPC specific. Now, after you launch an instance, you can change the security groups. So let's say, for example, uh, here I have an EC2 instance that is running and uh, at this time this is the security group I have Linux underscore SG now if you want to change this or you want to you want to add more security groups you can do that 
for that you can go to actions you can go to security and here you can see this chain security groups so as of now this is what we have now either i can remove this uh, uh now at this time this is the only security group i have but if you had more security groups it will show you the list and you can add the security groups as well so you can add the security groups at any point you want and aws provides security groups as one of the tools for securing your instances so you know if you want to secure your instances this is one of the option you have this is one of the mandatory option you have and you need to configure them to meet your security group so you know as to um, what traffic you want to allow and then from where you want to allow okay that's another important aspect you have so let's say for example if you say as of now the source it says 0.0.0, .0. well this is um, this is a security issue if you're working at an organization uh, level in real world you will never see this if you see this that's a security violation and you know the security team security team will reach out to you telling that hey please change this so this will always be restricted to a particular uh, ip address like maybe your organization ip address or your vpn ip address so that the access is allowed only from that particular source all right so that's where you can make use of your security groups to control to configure what all traffic you want to allow and you don't want to allow now there's no additional charge when you are uh, working with your security groups you don't have to pay any money it's completely free so you can add the um, um, you can either add multiple security groups or you can add multiple rules to a security group like in this case if you say have multiple rules to one security group um, generally what we follow is we try to maintain common security groups that is instead of having all the rules in one security group we divide them in um, common security groups so that we can reuse the uh, security groups all right so that's that's a uh, uh, best practice that we follow when we come when it comes to the security groups so that's about the introduction that we have as part of your um, uh, security groups now how do we work with this now there are two ways that you can work with your security groups one is when you are launching your uh, ec2 instance you can specify the uh, rules the firewalls and also let's say for example we'll call this as example and uh, we'll select our key pair and then your firewall now you have the option of either creating a new security group or you can choose an existing one right so you can reuse your security groups your security group follows one to many mapping so one security group can be used with any number of instances right so you have the option of reusing your security groups or if you want to create a new one you can go ahead and create a new security group now here it does not show you a lot of options you can click on edit and here you have the option of uh, giving a name to the security group so let's call this as example security group you can call it whatever you want it is user defined and you can give a description and then you start adding the rules so you can see by default it is always going to be your inbound rules we'll talk about that in some time and then you can start adding the rules so you know you want to allow ssh then uh, ssh is default 22 and then from where you want to allow so generally we go with the custom and we specify the range something like let's say like this slash 24 so you know any traffic from coming from this particular range allow ssh to this so you can give a description as well and if you want to add more rules you can go ahead and add the rule so one rule will be for uh, one type of traffic so ssh then maybe you can allow http uh, then if you have a, a custom port number like 8080 so for 8080 we don't have uh, um, anything uh, in this drop down so we go with the custom and then we give the port number and then again from where you want to allow and then so on now this is one option so when you launch this instance the security group gets created with the respective rules and it will be attached with the instance this is one option you have the other option you have is all of the security groups that you have already created will be available over here under the network and security you can find your security groups and this is where you can find the list of all of your security groups that you have in that particular region irrespective of the vpc you should be able to see all of the security groups so this is what i have now you can create a security group from here as well you can uh, give a name to this 
you can select the VPC. So as of now, I have only one VPC, which is the default VPC. So we will leave it to that. And then you start adding the rules. So this is also the same, just that the UI is slightly different compared to the um, other one, just with the, the one that we just saw. And here you can again choose. So you want to allow SSH, uh, maybe you want to allow HTTP, then uh, maybe you want to allow HTTPS. And then, you know, from where you want to allow. So custom, you can give the uh, range, give a description. And the outbound rules, if you see, by default, all the traffic is allowed from anywhere. That's the default uh, behavior we have with your security groups. And most of the time, we don't change it. We leave it uh, as it is. Inbound rules is the only one that we work with most of the time. So inbound rules will be traffic coming from the internet. All right. So what traffic you want to allow to your EC2 instance? We control that by making use of your inbound rules. We don't um, uh, make any changes to the outbound rules most of the time. But if you have a requirement, you can go ahead and make the changes. That's totally up to you. So let's go ahead and create this. So for now, I'll go with you know 0.0.0. .0. But again, at an organization level, we don't do that. And then something like, let's say, allow SSH access. Then we'll say allow HTTP access and then allow HTTPS access. Then you can add a tag for this, which is like a metadata. So let's call this as example security group and then create. So this will go ahead and create a new security group for us. All right. So here we should be able to see the security group. And then when you're launching your EC2 instance, we can reuse that security group. Okay, so this is the second option you have. So, you know, generally we create the security groups beforehand and then we start using those security groups every time we launch our instance. So here we'll go with the existing security groups and then I should be able to see the security group over here and then I can start launching the instances. So that's basically how you can uh, create your security groups and then attach those security groups with your EC2 instances. Now there are a few important characteristics that uh, um, uh, you should keep in mind when you work with your security group. So by default, security group contains the outbound rules that allow all the outbound traffic. So this is uh, what I was talking about when um, we create new security groups. By default, the outbound rules, all the traffic is allowed. That's by default, right? Now security groups are always permissive. You cannot create rules that deny the access. Now, with your security groups, you don't have an option to tell that, hey, I want to uh, deny HTTPS traffic. It is always permissive. All right. So whenever you're adding a rule, that means you're allowing certain traffic to your EC2 instance. So it is always permissive. And security groups enable you to filter traffic based on protocols and port numbers. All right. So based on your protocols and then port number, this is where your security groups can be used. So we filter the traffic based on this protocol and then the port numbers. Uh, you can add and remove the rules at any time. Your changes are automatically applied to the instances that are associated with the security group. So, you know, you can make changes to your security groups on the fly. For example, uh, let's say I have this EC2 instance and this is the um, uh, rules I have. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and add a new rule to this security group. So here I can go to edit inbound rules. And if I want, I can delete a rule or I can add a rule. And when I save this, the rules, the changes will be reflected automatically to all the instances that uh, that security group is attached with. Right. So when you associate multiple security groups with an instance, the rules from each security group are effectively aggregated to create one set of rules. So in the back end, AWS, even if you attach like, let's say, 10 security groups in the back end, AWS will combine all of these into one single set of rules and then it will start evaluating that to um, you know, control the traffic to your EC2 instances. So these are some of the characteristics that we have for your security groups. Pretty much that's all I have for this session. So that's so we have covered your introduction to your security group. So once again, your security groups are simply your firewalls. So any traffic that you want to control uh, to your EC2 instances, we can make use of your security group. So using the security groups, we can control your inbound traffic as well as the outbound traffic. 
uh, we also looked at uh, uh, creating your security groups, attaching the security groups to your EC2 instances, and then we also discussed a bit about the characteristics of, of your security groups. That's all I have for this session. Thank you. Once again, before you leave, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, leave a like and please share the video.